Hi everybody, this is Christopher Perovic, and let's talk Soul Control. Uh, before I start, I just want to thank Moki Moki for letting me host this video on his channel. I appreciate having the opportunity to talk to everybody about Soul Control, and uh, again, I'm, I'm appreciative to uh, Smoky Moki for letting me get the word out there. Uh, so let's let's kick things off. Uh, for, the first thing is. Uh, I should say that the reason this is coming about is because I recently played uh, Soul Control in two GOAT format tournaments, and I'm getting a lot of messages along this line of, is Soul Control even viable in 2021? Uh, because people think that I was memeing and not necessarily you know, trying to win any events. Uh, and before I touch on that, I, I got to just address you know, the elephant in the room. Uh, do I think Soul Control is the best deck type right now? Uh, no, no, I, I don't. Uh, will I show you the best version of Soul Control in this video? Um, no, but not for, you know, but not because I mean or anything. It's probably because just I don't think I have discovered it. Uh, and really to the point is can Soul Control win GOAT format tournaments in 2021? And the answer there is actually yes, yes, I am very confident that it can win a, a Go for a tournament in 21. It's totally possible. Um, and the reason why I think that people don't think that it's possible is because historically, Go Control has sort of uh, strong armed uh, Soul Control out of the metagame. And that's, uh, well, that's just, Go Control isn't really that popular anymore. So it's, it's more viable than ever, I'd say, is a fair statement. Uh, so with that, uh, why I decided to use Soul Control? Well, uh, first of all, <laughs> Royal Decree is a really good card right now. Uh, Chaos Turbo and Warrior or other aggro decks uh, are very dependent on their trap lineup uh, in terms of, like, for example, Chaos Turbo rel relies on Regeki Break uh, as spot removal. It is the most versatile element of an otherwise linear deck. And if you can turn that off, uh, then and force them to uh, combat your boss monsters with their power cards. It turns out actually they don't have a lot of power cards. They just, uh, Chaos Turbo is just a very consistent deck at getting to Chaos Sorcerer and Black Luster Soldier. Uh, and if you can just turn off uh, the trap element of it uh, and then just wage this war of attrition between their boss monsters and your boss monsters, uh, you'll come out ahead more often than not. And Chaos uh, Warriors or Warriors or I other aggro var variants, uh, they stabilize the board uh, with their traps. And if you can turn those off, uh, their non-floater, non-self replicating monsters uh, really can't uh, you know do anything about your uh, monarchs or anything like that um, also destroying face down monsters uh, has never been more important than right now uh, cast turbo again is the most popular deck right now and one of the things like I said it's it's not that the deck is super versatile uh, inherently it's that uh, it's very linear and consistent and and part of that is that when you draw a trinity in uh, cast trinity cards like Graceful Charity or Pot of Greed or Delinquent Duo in uh, Cast Turbo, it's more powerful, more impactful in that matchup because of the use of like Knight of Silence and Thunder Dragons uh, to abuse Graceful Charity in a way that other decks don't necessarily have the ability to abuse. And if you can abuse that multiple times, <laughs> You're just blowing every other deck out of the board. You have such a high ceiling compared to other decks as a way to build up advantage. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Magician of Faith, really a problem card right now. And when you look at other deck types, like, for example, Warriors, part of the reason they're successful is they're, they have a built-in mechanism to deal with face-down monsters. They have Blade Knights and Mystic Swordsman Level 2 and Exile Forces. And that's how the whole deck is structured. And that, they be, that's because the deck recognizes that destroying face-down monsters is so, so important. But, like... Other decks in the format, other sort of control or even aggro decks, like say, like for example, zombies, they don't have like a built-in way to deal with face-down monsters. It's not like there's a zombie type monster out there that will negate face-down monsters that you could just throw into the deck. Uh, however, soul control uh, has uh, soul exchange, which is wonderful spot removal and definitely takes care of face down cards. And in particular, in a way that goat control does not. So like you might look at goat control and say, well, goat control deals with face down monsters, right? But chaos turbo runs 
book a moon and regeki break right now and that's in part it's come become that way because you know leading up to now it's been go control has been really popular thunder dragon cast control has been really popular um so they uh, i guess what i'm trying to say is that chaos turbo is designed to counter the face down removal that is included in in regular control decks it is not designed to deal with uh soul exchange and uh yeah, I already touched on this point that the Chaos Turbo and Generic Aggro deck struggle against big monsters because they lack big built-in solutions. They rely on their boss monsters, and if you can out-boss monster them, you'll win. And yeah, so this is another reason why I decided to use it is because if there was ever a time to use it, uh, now would be the time because Go Control and Thunder Dragon Chaos Control aren't really that popular. So here's the thing that you probably care about the most deck lists right uh well first before i get to that i before i get to the decks that i've used specifically recently i just want to tell you that like i play a lot of different types of decks um some of these are you know tried and true some of these are very well known uh but a lot of them uh aren't uh, and a lot of them are include i guess on the face of it like combinations of cards you wouldn't necessarily just necessarily think about um and it's just because i want to experiment and sometimes i just want to have fun uh you know i I don't play a lot so when i do play i just want to make sure that i'm having a good time and i don't want to necessarily grind out with what i think is like the optimized uh chaos turbo deck uh, because i find that actually kind of boring um and i also find that experimenting helps me uh grow as a player so uh for that reason i picked up monarchs uh a little while ago just to play around with it and the first deck that i used was actually this one this is the first one i built um and the reason for that is uh oh it's funny there's a desk kangaroo in the side deck i forgot why i like that uh well anyway the so the main the main reason or the main idea behind this deck was to abuse ultimate offering uh so the concept here is if you get to sinister serpent uh and you have ultimate offering up uh you can you know pay 500 to use uh ultimate offerings effect uh normal set or summon your sinister serpent and then use your normal summon for the turn on a monarch guy and that's a free summon so you generate advantage uh off of the monarch summons and as long as you have the 500 life points to pay uh you can do this every turn so you can normal summon a monarch every turn it's sort of like the combination of sinister serpent and ultimate offering kind of create a treeborn frog uh which isn't in goat format but was really uh what made monarch such a powerful deck in 2006 uh so that's what i was aiming for and um I also used Fake Trap because Chaos Turbo runs Regeki Break and they can turn off Ultimate Offering really quickly. And I didn't want to use like Seven Tools of the Bandit or Solemn Judgment uh, because I felt like it interfered with the life point payment aspect of uh, Ultimate Offering. Uh, so anyway, uh, th- this wasn't good. Um, it turns out that uh, building your deck around a single unsearchable trap card is not a good strategy you will not draw it that often uh or often enough for it to be you know how you should structure the rest of your deck and um and fake i guess well anyway like if i were to revisit this i would probably you know main deck the brain controls it's you know it's fun it's um it's also you know i think 12 monarchs is not the way to go for reasons i'll talk about in a bit but um it's just okay it's a it was okay fun deck so i went from here and like i said I, I was trying to make monarchs work and i felt like okay you know part of the problem is you know ultimate offering uh isn't really reliable um and i, I really wish i had you know it's like something like cyber dragon in the format if cyber dragon was in the format i could easily just go off with monarchs uh like i did back in 2006 um so where can i get a a a cyber dragon in goat format remember we we mostly play uh before cybernetic revolution uh so i i went to uh a water monarch deck uh which i well the concept here was that whoops whoops you didn't see that so the concept here was that i was going to use aqua spirit as a cyber dragon 
Um, it's, just, it's not it's not Cyber Dragon, but like a Cyber Dragon, as in like as soon as I get a water monster in my graveyard, uh, I should be able to special summon an Aqua Spirit and be able to tribute for one of my now six monarchs. Um, and well, I also defaulted to this. By the way, there's another version of this you could use with uh, Giant Rat and Gigantes, and you can even use your tribute monster in that case as Dark Dust Spirit, which is really good against, for example, Goat Control and Thunder Dragon Chaos Control. Uh, but because the whole concept here is that those decks aren't that played that much, I didn't want to go the Earth route. I went this Water route. Um, anyway, uh, I also have an affinity for Re Revival Jam uh, because I won a regional with him in uh, my main deck. So that was... I always love that card, Revival Gem. Anyway, so uh, this also wasn't good, um, but it did make me realize. So, like, let me let me back up. So, I was I knew I wanted to use Mobius, right? And the problem is that like Mobius actually isn't that good of a card right now. Mobius is uh, gonna hit Regeki Break or uh, Ring of Destruction or you know some chainable card in the back row, even Book of Moon or, or something like that if it's not a trap. Uh, but it's gonna hit some chainable like more often than not. So I wanted in this deck to try to couple that with Royal Decree. And my concept here was something like, oh, I will never set. I'll make their Nolmans dead. I will use Royal Decree. I'll make their traps dead. And I should be able to apply pressure, um, you know, pretty easily because I've got like Abyss Soldiers and Mother Grizzlies just attack, 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 attack. And, you know, even there are things that would normally repel my attacks by, uh, you know, like Gravekeeper Spy. And now I have Monarchs to attack over them. Uh, and I have a lot of solutions here uh, to uh, deal with Chaos Guys. So I was like, this seems, it seems fine. Uh, another thing I realized is that uh, when you rely on Royal Decree and you can't uh, rely on Battle Traps uh, to deal with those Chaos guys, um, one interesting thing that I, I discovered is that, so uh, compared to like 2006 when Monarchs were popular and could compete with Chaos variants, um, at the time in 2006, there was no Black Luster Soldier. Black Luster Soldier wasn't in the format. Uh, so your damage cap on like what could be done to you in a turn was uh, defined by Chaos Sorcerer, a normal summon, and maybe like Brain Control. Uh, and that isn't actually like that much. It's particularly if you got like two monsters on your field, it's like, very hard for your opponent to break through without maybe like as a board but then your damage cap is like 4700 maybe like if you have premature on that or something like that you can add to it but it's you have to piece together these cards that are not really easy to summon and you can more importantly you can defend against them by having multiple monsters on your field uh whereas in go format because the black luster soldier exists and if uh, if you run monsters that don't protect themselves in battle uh like like dd assailant or mystic tomato or something like that uh, you're looking at over three three thousand damage, you know, just from a single attack, and uh, that makes it really difficult to just rely on royal decree, like you would have in two thousand and six. Uh, you need some other form of protection, and and I think scapegoat's the only thing available to us in go in go format. Um, I contrast this, by the way, to say that in two thousand six, another big damage doer. Uh, that you know maybe extend. I said that the damage cap was defined by you know chaos sorcerer blah, blah blah. It's also defined by Cyberstein. But Cyberstein had a built-in way to deal with scapegoat uh, in the in the form of a Cyber End Dragon. So you know it's not like scapegoat was going to necessarily be great, even if you could have run three with three metamorphosis and three thousand eyes restrict back then, which you couldn't. But even if you could, I don't know that it would have been so great just because Cyberstein kind of changed things up. Uh, but again, in Go format in particular, because Black Luster Soldier exists, you have to run Scapegoat. And if you're going to run Scapegoat, you, you should be using cards to make the Scapegoats, you know, pay off, make it worth it. And metamorphosis is a good card. Um, to use here, and well, I mean, obviously, because Metal Grizzly searches out Sinister, you should have readily accessible Sinister Serpent to make Metamorphosis live, uh, even without Scapegoat. Um, but also note that the Monarchs that uh, we're using here are level six, and 
Darkblade the Dragonite is a really good level six fusion right now. Uh, it, you know, especially when you've got Decree up, you can remove three guys from your opponent's graveyard when you inflict battle damage with it. Uh, that's a very strong card. So Metamorphosis seems like a natural inclusion for the deck. Uh, I've also added creature swaps because I was using Mother Grizzlies and even Aqua Spirit. Like once I summon it, like I just okay, just swap and I'll take your Chaos Sorcerer. Like if that ever comes to that point. Uh, so it seemed like that. It seemed when I looked at this on the face of it, it seemed like a consistent. Mm, I can say, like something with like an overall design aesthetic that like all made sense. All these pieces seem to make sense to me. Even the lone call the haunted because a, st a stuck call the haunted. If you contribute it or if you uh, uh, you know have flip up decree after you use it, uh, you can bounce it back with a bis soldier and reuse it. Uh, and you could also you know turn off your royal decree to use uh, Call the Haunted. You could also use Abyss uh, Soldier. Like, these are classic goat control tricks. Like, you can use Abyss Soldier in a lot of different ways with uh, uh, Thousand Eyes or reusing your Monarchs. It seemed, it seemed good. Uh, it isn't. Um, so, but I did learn some lessons and I applied them uh, in the lead up to uh, the Obelisk tournament that I decided to use Monarchs in. Um, I didn't really play with this deck a lot before that tournament. I think I played like four matches. Um, and I just kind of streamlined some ratios. I went to two tomato, two reaper. Um, and I went to two decree leaning sort of on my, uh, 2006 experience. You know, you can, I, I don't know you can tell, but, uh, two a sir priest to, uh, and two creature swap and two world decree was really common back then, uh, along with the mystic tomatoes and the spirit reapers. So I just kind of just said, look, this all looks consistent. I also threw in Grand Marg, which I think is a really underrated monarch. Uh, it's certainly actually better than Zaborg and Mobius. Uh, these cards are very difficult to use in comparison. Grand Mark can also pop face down monsters, which, as I said in the beginning of the video, which is one of the reasons you want to use uh, monarchs. Uh, and Zaborg is really difficult to use with brain control or soul exchange. It's, it's rare for you, your, your opponent to have, I'm making this up, but something like, you know, like a Chaos Sorcerer and a face down monster. And you're going to brain control the. F Chaos Sorcerer and then pop the face down monster. Most of the time, you're going to have like a face up Dekoichi and a face down monster. And then you have to brain control the Dekoichi. Let me back up. You look at a face down, face up Dekoichi, and then you have brain control in Zaborg, and you have to wait. You can't do anything. And then you have to wait for them to set a monster. And then your best play is just to brain control the Dekoichi and then tribute to pop the face down monster, which isn't particularly great. But that, that you have to wait the extra turn to even play Zaborg that's actually worse it, if you had something like grand marg and they had something like a back row in that spot i'm not saying it's great to brain control the Kuchi, but that's still way better than having to wait the turn uh and eat another 14 and hope that they set a monster uh anyway i played this at, at this event um i side decked in the server priest and the spirit reaper for uh over the tomatoes for control matchups uh i cited an exiled um and for against turbo i think uh, I cited Nudori for aggro matchups, along with I cited out the Noblemans and uh, the, for the enemy controls in the aggro matchup. I kind of felt like I would use these traps if I, if World Decree was ever not great. Like, for example, against... Uh, I don't know. I didn't really think about it that much, to be honest. Uh, I, I just kind of felt like, well, maybe I'll just have this just in case. Um, also, actually, was I lost... <laughs> So I say I play four matches, but I lost one of them to uh, King Dragoon, uh, which just wrecks this deck. I think I have just creature swaps as my outs to it. Um, yeah, that's a really tough card to deal with. So I was like, oh, you know, I definitely want to have uh, DD Warrior Lady and Widespread Ruin and Torrential Mirror Force in my side deck. But uh, anyway, so I ran this at the event, uh, and it was okay. Um, I, I did learn that I wish I had run the third brain control. I think that's a really good card. Um, I don't think in a vacuum that a server priest and creature swap are actually good cards. I don't think Mystic Tomato is a good card right now. So like the the core of the deck, as in like monster monarchs and uh, well, I say tri let's say tribute monsters and brain control and soul exchange and scapegoat and royal decree. Whoops. Sorry about that. Uh, all that I think is pretty good, uh, but the supporting cast here, I don't think that's so good. Um, and it was just like run out of necessity because I don't think that 
like one of the concepts was I wanted like again I wanted to play uh, to make no man's dead and I wanted to as much as possible just normal summon and not have to worry about setting um, and I find that like if you run for example Gravekeeper Spy into Koichi you can really get blown out um, so I just, I just wanted to do this other way more aggressive option um, and that's just it's just okay but when it came so then it came around to the three versus three tournament and one of the first things I did is I took out the Zaborgs and Mobiuses which are not good for blowback dragons which are is actually really good uh, people think that this is a bad card and they're wrong um, and I'll tell you why uh, so first things first is uh, okay so think about monarchs in terms of EV right so EV is expected value like what is the value that you're expected to generate by summoning a, a monarch so this house is actually really good because it's going to hit an in-hand card and most of the time that's not going to be a sinister serpent or chaos sorcerer I'm sorry knight of Salent or thunder dragon so it's going to it's going to be like a real card more often than not um but that me because you're picking off one card um let's just say for simplicity's sake that's how you measure EV because you're picking off one card uh, and sometimes it is a card that it is free for your opponent. The number is less than one, uh, but it is still pretty high. So it's like 0.9 is your EV. Uh, Grand Marg, if you're only ever using it to pop face down monsters, uh, yeah, that's a really good effect, but like sometimes you're going to hit Sangin or Sinister Serpent, which are also free. And if you're using it to pop the back row, but the back row is chainable, like for example, it's MST, and they chain it on your Royal Decree. You know, these are cards that negate the Eve, the advantage that is generated by your Monarch. So it's it's also one because you can use its effect once, um, but it or but. It, the cap is one, but it's lesser because sometimes you're using it against things that are free, or it's not nothing at all. Sometimes you're summoning it just to attack because, like that, you're in that position in the game where you want to attack for 2400 and put them on a one turn clock. So it is some number less than one. Blowback Dragon, by virtue of his effect, and this is the thing that a lot of people point out, is that he's a 50 50 card. So you think that the baseline is 0.5 you think that's its max cap and then everything else i just said factors into that if you're popping a sangin or a sinister serpent that was free uh it's going to be less than 0.5 the same thing if you're popping a back row that's chainable uh it's going to be less than 0.5 so sure yeah so if everything else um one out of ten times uh that's gonna you're gonna be targeting a free card like you would with a monarch then sure so instead of it being uh 0.5 is your cap you gotta imagine 0.45 is your cap However, the thing that makes Blowback Dragon different is that you can use him for multiple turns. Um, so if he survives a second turn, your EV becomes, that's right, 0.9. Well, wh whatever it is, times two, because you got two turns out of it. And if you survive for three turns, that's 1.35. Uh, so he has the ability, as long as you can make him survive, he has the ability to go uh, to get more EV than any monarch can, uh, and uh, because his defense is 1200, he survives against Sukiyomi, which is the thing that actually kills monarchs the most. It's one of the most damaging cards against monarchs, and it's how they get rid get off the field. So he lives longer than most monarchs, and when he does, uh, and and like for example, in conjunction with oh I don't know a royal decree, uh, he can. Get really high EV. It can, you can be in a spot where you're playing against an opponent who has no choice but to just set a face down monster and set a back row in front of a blowback dragon and hope that you miss. And those are games where these this deck is just it's a blowout. It's not even close. Uh, so anyway, you can you'll see that like I between this deck and the last deck, a lot of things were really similar. I went to a three world decree. Uh, I decided that Ring of Destruction was um it's really good for like securing game shots like when you drop a first monarch and then you drop a second monarch uh like for example you go soul exchange destalos turn one and then they go set set and then you uh grand mark and then attack and they'll try to destroy it but then you roll decree uh you can get in these spots where like you steamroll over your opponent and like 24 24 that's 48 and ring of destruction is like really good to close out the game in, the, in those spots however because you're using brain controls um the idea of using it defensively uh, and protect, well, it doesn't really protect your life points. That's kind of the problem. Uh, you'd still take the same damage you would have if the tech wasn't there. And the monster's gone, which you kind of actually want on the field so that you can bring control it or soul exchange it. So 
Uh, offensively, it's a great card. Defensively, it's not that great. Call the Haunted um, is also just okay, um, but I felt that you know half the time I'm using it, it's to do something after a battle phase trick to like you know I've attacked and they mirror force and then I call the Haunted and bring it back up. And I was like, well, if this is just a Royal Decree, I could just not have to do that. And then I have the power of Royal, I can add the power of Royal Decree uh, more often. Uh, so I decided to go three Royal Decree there and I fit in the third brain control and I went to blowback and I used this deck. And this deck is actually really good. Um, I had the same issues um, that I had before about like a Sir Priest and Creature Swap and uh, Mystic Tomato not necessarily being good in a vacuum. And I think that there are shells of this deck that don't include these cards that uh, is probably better. Um, but that's what I used for this event. And I think like, so we did, I think we did pretty good um, in that event. And I think we would have done better uh, if we, I mean, unfortunately that event came to an end because our team got cheated, uh, and the TO of that event decided to not disqualify the team that cheated. When we played them, they waited for the next round, which was weird. Uh, so the next team that they played got a free win and we got kicked out of the tournament, even though we were cheated. So it didn't make sense. It was kind of frustrating because I felt like this deck had more gas in it and could have gone further. Um, but we went pretty far into the tournament uh, with me and Smoker using a version of this deck. Smoker, I think, ran um, Mobius and Zaborg over something. Uh, I think Grandmark. I think he also used three tomatoes and one Reaper, maybe. Um, but I don't really, I don't remember it. I didn't like Mystic. I don't like the Mystic Tomato that much as a card. He was more fond of it. Um, but yeah, so this is what I used. Um, I'd say that, uh, you know, my concept for the side deck was sort of like, when are, when do I want to side out cards? So I want to side out a server priest against aggro matchups. I want to side out Nolman against aggro matchups. So I want to make sure I have at least like four cards uh, for an aggro matchup. And if you look at the side deck, you can just say, oh, yeah, well, okay, three Berserk Gorillas and yeah, why not DD Warrior Lady? These are fine four cards to use in that matchup. Uh, are, is Creature Swap worse in that matchup? Okay, well, then you want two extra cards so maybe you know breaker and mystical space typhoon or two other cards you can squeeze in against that matchup um i used the uh, king tiger wang it was a something it was at the last minute edition i wanted to try against uh, uh go control because i expected to see some go control and um just to turn off Sukiomi, which is really annoying, and also Suicide with the Sur Priest, which is the best card to use against this deck. It's the most annoying card to deal with. Um, but uh, I ne never had an opportunity to try that out. Uh, it was also useful, in theory, against uh, Rescue Cat and Aggro Burn, which is, or Aggro Bomb, which is uh, something I was just I was worried about. Um, because I wanted to keep in Royal Decree, but you know, you never really know how that go how that goes against the Aggro Bomb deck. Against Cat, you know they have True Nade, so they can still True Nade your Decree and and then set their traps and then pop off on the next turn before you can flip up your Decree. So it's a little less useful there. But against Aggro Bomb in particular, uh, I wanted to keep in Royal Decree, and I felt like Wang Hu was probably going to be a good way to deal with uh, a lot of that deck. Turns out didn't realize this until much later uh they have an out like if they set a giant rat and you attack with a king tiger wang who if they've already summoned a drama tokens on your field they can just search out a panda and panda's big enough that it's not going to be destroyed by a king tiger wang who they can also um one guy used last will against me so he summoned an injection or he activated last will summon injection fairy lily book a moon my king tiger wang who and then brought out a rescue cat, which uh, that was really annoying. Anyway, that wasn't in the tournament. That's a, just a side story. Um, anyway, I like this deck. I think it's a really good deck. I think people should give it a shot, uh, experiment with it, and uh, you know, try to create the next iteration. And that leads me into this last slide, which is uh, you know what now and. I guess, I guess my point here is that I think soul control or monarchs slash tributes in general 
uh, are really underrated right now. I think that the most popular decks uh, struggle to deal with them, uh, and in particular, Royal Decree. Um, but um, I don't think a lot of people are giving them enough credit uh, because of historically, you know, what what GOAT control has done to their perception in GOAT format. So uh, give it a shot and, and let me know what you come up with. I'd be super interested uh, to see what you do and hopefully uh, someone takes it to a tournament. Uh, you know, you don't have to, you don't, I mean, something I decided for myself, I'd rather lose with Monarchs than win with Chaos Turbo right now. I don't know about you. I'm not a big fan of the metagame as it sits right now. And I'd really love to see more people taking the opportunity just to play around, just to experiment a little bit. Uh, there's going to be tons of tournaments this year. You're going to have plenty of opportunities to qualify for Worlds. You can you can spare one for just playing something fun. Um, so with that said, uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. Take care.